Okay, let's uh, look at another concept, another set of definitions we're going to need in order to analyze sinusoids. And we're going to talk about the idea of lagging or leading phase angles. It turns out this is going to be very important to phaser analysis as we start looking at how to describe different sinusoids. So what I've done here is I've plotted out three voltages on a time axis. And the center one in black is V1 is equal to Vm cosine omega t. So at time t equals zero, it reaches its maximum value of Vm and then oscillates through as we go through each cycle. And then I have a second waveform. V2 is equal to Vm cosine omega t minus phi. So in this case, I'm shifting the waveform to the right on the time axis and it peaks and then basically follows the V1 waveform. And then I have the V3 waveform which is time shifted in the opposite direction. Vm cosine omega t plus V. And so V2 and V3 are just slightly shifted versions along the time axis of V1. So looking at this, let's, uh, let's consider how this thing is going to behave and how we would describe the differences between these three voltages. Well, leading and lagging, let's see how we apply this. We can say the following. We can say that V3 leads V1 by phi degrees. And what do we mean by that? What we're saying is V3 reaches its peak value before V1 does. So it gets there first, then V1 follows. So V3 leads V1. We can also say that V1 lags V3 by phi degrees. So in other words, V1 reaches the peak value after V3. It's behind it. It's lagging. So notice it's all a matter of which waveform we look at in relationship to the other. We can also say that V2 lags V1 by phi degrees. And we can also say that V2 lags V3 by 2 phi degrees. So in other words, V3 in blue also lags V3, only it's twice the phase angle. You're adding those phi's together. It lags by 2 phi. All right. Of course, along with this, I could say that V1 leads V2. Or I could also say that V3 leads V2. And so I could say the same thing, just depends upon which one I look at, which waveform I look at first versus the other. So leading and lagging is all relative to each other. If one voltage lags another voltage, then that voltage also leads the other. Okay, now given this definition of leading and lagging, as I pointed out, let's put out a number here. Let's assume phi is equal to 90 degrees. In that case, V2 would be equal to Vm times cosine omega t minus 90 degrees. Which would also be equal to Vm times cosine omega t plus 270 degrees. In other words, I put in the value for phi, but we know that we can add 360 degrees or 2 pi to any value and get the same result. 
So all I did here was I just took the minus 90, added 360, and got 270. So when you look at this, you can say to yourself, well, you know, here V3 is leading V1. But couldn't you also say that V3 is lagging V1 if you looked at that peak back there? So really, when you think about it, by adding or subtracting 360 degrees, you can make any voltage lag or lead any other voltage along this time axis. So it kind of looks like leading and lagging might be a little bit arbitrary. Well, a long time ago, people realized this was true, but it was also confusing. If you could just arbitrarily add 360 degrees and flip leading to lagging or vice versa, then really we need to kind of limit our range of phase angles. So what we get is this. In general, we specify phase angles in the range of plus or minus 180 degrees. This is the convention. So looking at this, you could say, gee, a 90 degree lag is equal to a 270 degree lead. Which do we pick when we're specifying, when we're comparing two voltages? Well, this is what we'll do. We'll stick with the phase angle that's in this range, plus or minus 180 degrees. So we're not going to use this, we're going to use that. We're going to say the 90 degree lag. So this is the convention you're going to be using. And anytime you see a phase angle that exceeds plus or minus 180 degrees, then you need to add or subtract 360 degrees to it to get it within the range of plus or minus 180 degrees, because that is the convention we use. OK? So. Leading and lagging, we'll see this again as we go through and start looking at impedances and phasor analysis. So just keep this in mind, but once we start actually working problems, you'll see this actually becomes actually pretty obvious as we start learning, learning how to, uh, to analyze phasor voltages and currents, and then this all makes a lot more sense.